Allah didn't preserve the Bible because Allah knew that the final messenger was going to come, the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad, he didn't reject uh, Jesus Christ. In fact, no Muslim is a Muslim until they believe in Jesus Christ, um, until they believe in the virgin birth. Um, it's an article of faith. Um, we have an entire chapter, chapter 19, named after Mother Mary, the Virgin Mary. You know what I mean, the mother of Jesus. Um, we have no Muslim is a Muslim until they believe in Abraham, Moses, and all the messengers of God. So these are articles of faith. But then the problem comes when, like you said, um, <coughs> there's too many interpretations. I'm saying, look, let's go back to the source. What did Jesus Christ teach? Um, I think he just taught, um, what's it called, kindness and loving one another and unifying people together more than anything else. Close? Unifying on what? Because here, your mum will probably know this verse better, yeah? Um, it's Mark 12, 28. Yeah? Jesus Christ was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Yeah? He replies, the first of all commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mm -hmm. So this would have been a perfect time for Jesus Christ to talk about Trinity. Jesus Christ never directly talks about Trinity. No, he doesn't. Does that make sense? So I'm like, why are we going to let the Trinity divide us when we have the same belief? We believe in Jesus, we believe in one God. Jesus Christ didn't teach Trinity. He's teaching belief in one God. Even the Ten Commandments. Ask your mom, what is that? What's the first of the Ten Commandments? Um, you would love God above all things. Close, 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 close. Yeah. Um, ask her. Number two, honorarás a tu padre y a tu madre. The second one is you would honor your parents. Basically. Number three, no matarás. You won't kill is the third one. Apparently. Okay. Close, no, no, it's close. She says it with such conviction. I yes. believe her. <laughs> um, so the first commandment is, the Lord is one. Okay, not to make any images of God. So this is what Moses taught. This is what Jesus taught. Where did Trinity come from? I mean, the only thing that the Bible is saying is that the Bible of Jesus no habla sobre la Trinidad. Que la Trinidad es algo que hemos hecho nosotros. Y lo que la Trinidad no lo dice. Es que realmente yo no creo en la iglesia ni creo en los curas. Yeah. So I was about to creo say that to you. Dios so my thing is, uh, my dad is the one that's the most religious one. You probably have the funnest time of your life with my dad if he's speaking English every real Because he's like the most religious one, like by the book kind of thing. My mom and I, or my mom mostly, she doesn't necessarily believe in the church, nor necessarily what they preach in the church or everything that the Bible says, she more just believes in the fact that there's one God and that that God is the one that will help her and will guide her and support her and that's pretty much it. Mm. No, no, that, that, that's my point. So <clears throat> how do we reconcile her belief in one God and the Trinity? And why do we mention Trinity when Jesus Christ didn't teach Trinity? Does that make sense? So if you could show me, now, because um, the thing is, even your dad, when you get home, when? he's not going to say Jesus Christ to Trinity. Yeah, They're going to read it into it. And yeah. I'm like, why are we reading into the Bible, the Trinity, when <coughs> the word Trinity isn't in the Bible, when Jesus Christ didn't teach it, when he didn't say... Um, his many points, he's saying that, oh, um, God, my God. Jesus Christ is worshipping God. Yeah. You made a point, God incarnate, right? Nowhere in the entire Bible, Jesus Christ never claims to be God incarnate. In fact, there's many points where Jesus Christ, he's, he's eating food. Yeah. He's on the cross saying, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken yeah, yeah, me? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah? But I'm like, <coughs> if he's part of the Trinity or if he's in God incarnate, why is he behaving like this? There's an, so the interpretation is that I've been taught when I was younger was that it was just for him to be more relatable to us and to see that the same way that um, we like God understands that we suffer and God understands how we feel and wants to be closer to us. That's the interpretation that I was taught as to why he did all of that. No, no, that, that, that's fine. That's what you was taught, but is that what you believe? 
right now you're an adult. Is I that don't something? I believe in much because I don't know what to believe in because yeah. I have too many questions. Yeah. So keep no, it. Okay. Let, let, let's let's hear your questions because no. the thing is right. Uh -huh. God is all knowing. Yeah. But like she yeah. obviously God doesn't, doesn't, doesn't need to become a man to know how men think. But we don't know how. We obviously know that God knows everything and He knows a lot more than we do yeah. to some extent that we can't even comprehend or understand. Yeah, we can't comprehend God's knowledge. Of course yeah? not. But, now, um, how, now, you were talking about God became a man to become more relatable for us, yeah? So for us to understand that He understands, not for Him to show He understands. It's for us to feel like He's someone like more close than what we think. But then what... what that's the purpose behind it. God came through a woman's body. God um, ate, slept. God um, had all the desires a normal man would have. Because if, because <clears throat> it's a very in Islam, this is with all due respect, this is a blaspheming statement to say that God incarnate, God became a man. Um, so it's, it's, we have to think before we say like God became a human being. Then God is no longer. God. If God is a human being, then God can die, and God feels old, gets old, and goes through aging process, and they, they goes through cause and effect. God yeah. eats food and then has to defecate. Mm -hmm. So it's like this is not godly. So <clears throat> someone like yourself, many Christians who's searching, I'm gonna put on a platter for you okay. yeah, the basic doctrine of Islam. Yeah, can you tell me how you feel about it. Firstly, there's one God. Pero quien escribe, quien escribe el libro del Islam es Mohammed, que va al desierto y en el desierto no, alguien, va a una cueva, a una cueva y alguien le habla y él, él empieza a escribir. Yes. Sí. Es lo que yo he leído. Es como como Jesús, ¿no? Jesús no escribió la Biblia. No, no la, la escribieron los hombres. Ese es el gran problema. Esa es la diferencia que hay. No, I'm just talking about the difference of who wrote the Bible and who wrote the Quran. That's what she was talking to me about. No, that's fine. <coughs> um, who wrote the Quran? Um, wasn't it Muhammad? He Close. went inside the cave. Who, who wrote yeah. the Bible? A man, a man, just men. Yeah. A bunch of different men. So, not only that, we believe that the Quran is from God and God will protect it. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't make that claim. So basically, we believe in, like, you know, I'll quote the Bible to you, right? We, as Muslims, believe in a book that was revealed to Jesus Christ. We call it the Injil. And that's the word from God, right? Um, but you call it, but then the Bible now, over years, man-made elements has gone into it. So with us, the Prophet Muhammad, he spoke Arabic. <coughs> Yeah? yeah, the Quran is in Arabic. Yeah, and it yeah. can't be translated, right? It can. Um, I'm going to give you by isn't, the end of our conversation. Isn't the certain parts that can't be translated or written? No, no, no. All of it. All of it can be translated yeah. to the nearest meaning. So when I give you a translation of the Quran, I'm not giving you the Quran. I'm giving you the nearest translation, the best translation possible of the Quran. The Quran, if you want the Quran, you have to read in Arabic. You have to understand the Arabic language. For example, um, in the Quran, chapter 112, there's four verses that define God. Right? Kul hu Allah hu ahad. Say Allah is uniquely one. Here we translate Kul as one. Right? Kul, uh, sorry, Ahad, sorry. Ahad as one. Yeah? So we say Kul hu Allah hu ahad. Say Allah is uniquely one. Ahad. Right? Ahad is one of the names of Allah. But in Arabic, you say Ahad, one as in Wahid. Yeah? So why have we translated Ahad into one, which is one of the names of Allah, which means uniquely one, there's nothing before it, there's nothing after it. It's because <coughs> it's just a near translation, does it make sense? Yeah. But to get the true beauty of it, you have to learn that Ahad is one of the attributes of God, that is singular, it's one. You know when you say, here's one leaflet, yeah. it implies that we're a second leaflet. Yeah, um, with Ahad, it's just just one. There's, there's nothing before it. There's nothing after it. But it's going to become a very long translation if we're going to go into so much deal with just one of the words. And that's the depth. That's the detail the Quran comes with. One word 
can have up to like 70 meanings yeah so it, it is profound in that sense so when I'll hopefully give you a little translation of the Quran it's the best to get something from Arabic the um, Arabic which the Quran was revealed in translated into English translated into Spanish did you mention you had a Spanish Quran yeah, at home? Yeah. my mum got one from I think from there is from you yeah. guys. Yeah. Has you read it? How much of it has you read? Around the quarter part, she studies English, so she goes to college, she has to work, but she's read about a quarter. Okay. That's lovely. And then so far, did you read anything that kind of she disagrees with yeah. or she found difficult to understand she said that not for now she actually really likes what she has read and especially she finds it interesting that's beautiful that's amazing but I think that we have to read more Para poder opinar, opinar. She thinks that she is going to have to read a lot more to actually form an opinion about what she thinks about. She's a smart woman, your mama. She's a and very right. educated woman. No, no, it's good because she's, she's reserved her opinion and she, she's read more. Yeah, and I respect yeah. that. That's good. Yeah. It's intelligence. Um, so, like I was saying, the fundamental belief is there's one God. God sent um, prophets and messenger all with the same message to worship the God alone yeah? we don't make any partners with God um, and for us to get salvation is to actually obey and live by the perfect scripture that was revealed by God which is the Quran um, there's a four-line definition in the Quran which I started with where it says Allah Allah say Allah is uniquely one Allah is Allah is self-sustaining eternal like Allah is not in need of anyone or anything. He did not beget, nor was he begotten. Um, he was not born, nor does he have children, nor does he have offspring. There's nothing comparable to God. So if we say, oh, Allah is a billion times stronger than the strongest man. No, you can't compare the creation with the creator. Allah is a million times more beautiful than the sunset. No, you can't compare the creation with the creator. How, how do you feel about this? It doesn't really... It just seems like a normal statement to make about God. Yeah. How do you feel about the fundamentals of what I've said? Because at the end of the day, it's nothing... With all due respect... <laughs> My mistake. It's nothing where it's particularly complicated, where it's like, look, God became a man, or um, he's one of three, or he's the father, or then he's the son, and this is just simple that the, we only worship the creator, the one who created us. How do you feel about that? Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't yeah. disagree or agree. You don't disagree with it, but you don't agree with it either. I just don't know. I've never known. Whether you mentioned before you have questions. What what are your questions? I'm curious. I have questions. To me, it's not like there's so many things in the world that to me do not make sense, and trying to put God next to them does not make sense to me. Like what, for example? Um, I don't know. Like, um, what, what's your what's your most profound fundamental question? I don't know. I can't think of one. But I guess one okay, of the just, questions yeah, right. I've had was like, why? Like sometimes babies are like born and then die a few days after, like mm. of like horrible diseases that you know they didn't um, deserve to be having done anything wrong. They've just been born, just mm. normally like any other child would. But then a few days after, they just die of something horrible. They went through a lot of pain, and then that causes the parents ten times even more pain. You know, and suffering because the child has just died after a few days of something horrible. Like, 
Okay. Sorry, thank you. It's okay. Um, so, <coughs> something like that, it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> now, what ends up happening is, you know, sometimes we're trying to kind of see the world through our limited lens, right? Through your life experience, right? Has there been a situation where something seemed bad, but later on you're like, I'm glad this happened to me because it's had this benefit yeah. in hindsight? Yeah. Because um, I think they, there's many ways to kind of tackle this question, right? And I've been assuming many people ask this question, right? And I don't find it a particularly challenging question as well. Because <coughs> Sometimes we see the action of God and we're like, oh, why would God do this? But it's like, we accept that God is all-knowing, God is all-powerful, right? Um, God's knowledge, like we can't even imagine God. But then we're trying to comprehend God's behavior. Sometimes we just need to humble ourselves and think that God's given. No, pero es que yo, yo le podría hacer tres mil preguntas, porque el musulmán abarca todo, y no todo el musulmán, hay musulmanes que llevan el Corán al extremo, por ejemplo, los moros son musulmanes y no son igual, para nada, que los... Eh... Pero esos son extremos, es como los católicos extremos. Es... Anyway, sorry. No, no. What she said? Um, she's talking about um, how, like... Um, some Muslims take Quran to an extreme and interpret it in a way that it's not meant to be interpreted um, because she's like known of a couple of people that have done stuff like that and um, there's a really so in secondary school we religious studies was compulsory yeah. and we got taught about Islam and Christianity both together for our GCSEs and I remember one of the main reasons they did that was to get rid of a lot of the bad things that had been connotated towards Islam. Mm. Um, so I remember at some point my mom didn't have like the bestest of views of it just because of what she had seen and heard but then afterwards after knowing more about it and also when I went to school I then told her whatever it was I learned um, she came to have a different opinion of what it actually was because I think in school I got taught that the word like Islam meant peace or something yeah. like that um, and I've never thought bad about it my mom just has seen and heard things from when she was a child and stuff like that and she doesn't think like that anymore but she just wants to just tell me that so. yeah, and that's fine and I think it's not down to interpretation because it occurred to me like you know we have a because I've had this conversation in my workplace and with colleagues as well and I find it quite profound where I was reflecting with non-Muslims and people of other faiths that I speak to we have a tradition of scholarship so I can't read the Quran and start interpreting it it's basically how did the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him understand it how did the disciples, the companions understand it and then that knowledge is passed down to us and if it doesn't coincide with it, so it's not even really a matter of interpretation. And I find that quite profound because what ends up happening is, I didn't realise this. I just assumed that other religions adopted this scholarship. Um, so it's not like, okay, different people can interpret differently. We always go back to, okay, it was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, how did he understand it? And then, like your mum was saying, you can't really judge the religion on the bad apples. You know what I mean? Like even, uh, what's his name? Adolf Hitler, he was a Christian. Yeah, it makes and sense. he did horrible things. Yeah, and then you can't, I wouldn't attribute and say, oh, this is what Christianity oh, yeah. teaches. My mum yeah. has a thing where she always says that, um, you know, just because like someone goes to church every Sunday, it doesn't mean that, you know, they're a saint when they're outside of the church. Because mm. you can go to church every Sunday, but if you're a murderer, then what's the point of you going to church every Sunday? Yo tengo cuatro compañeras en clase que son de Pakistán, son musulmanes y han tenido una vida horrorosa. Entonces eh, se contradice mucho, porque supongo que ellos llevan el Corán al, al extremo en ese país.
Oh, she's talking about how um, she has a couple um, women from her class when she teaches English that are from Pakistan and they have shared that they have had horrible lives like living conditions back in Pakistan where I believe you know, um, Islam is the main religion and she says that she that's the only one thing that she finds contradictory when if everything is meant to be really peaceful how come they have horrible lives due to what they have to do and the laws they make Specifically? The Quran no speak the woman. She's saying that the Quran doesn't say that you should no. push women aside and treat them badly. The woman. No, no, no. But um, she doesn't understand why they've had such horrible experiences when Quran is the complete opposite of what you should do. I honestly, I would probably need to kind of speak to them and find out like what their experiences were. Um, you would find that Islam actually uplifts women. Oh, yeah, I've heard. Um, <coughs> For example, the Prophet 1400 years ago, when like, the Greek philosophers and the Christians were debating, do women have souls? Yeah, um, about buying and selling women um, as property and cattle. But Islam is saying, no, um, the best amongst you is the one who treats their wife the best. Yeah, um, a man came to the Prophet and said, oh, uh, who should I give my time and my kind of companionship with? Um, who comes first? And he says, your mother. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your father. <coughs> so, Islam is giving the gold, silver, bronze medal to yeah. the mothers, you know what I mean? And I think, um, when we don't have this kind of knowledge, so, again, I can't really talk about the kind of experience those two women in Pakistan have had. Um, <coughs> I've known many people who've gone to Pakistan and had very good experience there as well. Um, so if she can mention anything specific, bad experience that they had. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> then you'd be very surprised to know that one of the greatest scholars in Islam, like we have a lot of female scholars, and that's part of our heritage, and we don't shy away from it. Um, the wife of the Prophet, Aisha Radanha, um, in a time where one in a hundred men knew how to read, she was a scholar, she knew how to read and write as well. So, um, and people used to go and learn from her. So the fact that um, Pak well, those women's experience in Pakistan, like they didn't allow women to get educated. This isn't something that Islam teaches, yeah, and it's not. Because yeah, I'm not yeah. saying it is. I know. Point I've said that it is. Yeah, yeah. Like I have heard from when I studied some of it, and from mm. friends. I have a lot of friends that are Muslim, mm. and they tell me this. I find religion really interesting, mm. um, and I find Islam really interesting too. I find all religions interesting. Interesting. Um, because I don't exactly. You've got the open mind, so yeah. you're like you're I'm able like to kind of on the gain. fence. Mm. So I know believe or do not believe. I do feel like there is something. I'm not sure what that something is. Um, I don't know what to call it or what to believe in, but I find everything really interesting. Yeah. And I think this is a good position to have. But just to go back to answering your question, it's like you know when you see a newborn baby suffering and so on and so forth. Um, but then you have to realize, you know, God, um, not only is God all loving, God is merciful, God is all wise as well. So there's a wisdom behind what God does. Um, like, we, we see these terrible things which are taking place, and sometimes we can't really understand it, but then you can reconcile it thinking that, look, I have God's knowledge and wisdom, God is all just as well. Yeah. And then when you get the justice of God and you think to yourself that, okay, look, this child's going through this suffering now, yeah? but then you've got paradise, yeah? or um, the family's going through this suffering. Now, this suffering is short term in the sense that are, they, are the parents going to use this suffering to actually go closer to God? Are they gonna, how are they going to use this test? And the thing is, this life is temporary. Yeah? And the hereafter in the paradise is infinite, it's for eternity. So 
from those kind of narratives. So you've got the kind of test element, you've got the kind of us not really fully understanding God's wisdom behind God's actions. You've got um, reconciling God's names and attributes of God being just as well as loving, as well as merciful. So then, I don't know, does that, does that help kind of make you feel like... Yeah, but it all just feels like, why a test like that? Like mm. why, I don't know, because the image of God is for him to be really loving and all-knowing and stuff like that. I obviously will not ever be able to understand or comprehend why he does what he does mm. or why he's done what he's done mm. or any of the opinions he's ever had of what he's done, like in general. Mm. But um, it just doesn't feel... If he is all loving, I don't understand why he would do something like that just for a test for the parents' faith. Check this then. Um, imagine I could get rid of all of suffering. Yeah, but it came at a price, and the price is free will. You see. I cannot be asked to get into a conversation <laughs> about free will. So, um, no, no, so if I took away free will, then there's no suffering, there's everyone's living a healthy life, um, everyone's obeying God, following the commandments. They wouldn't know that it's not, they don't have free will. Like, they wouldn't. You wouldn't know, like, if you do or don't have free will. Like, if you, if suffering just stops, yeah. right? You could just carry on with your life thinking that you're making the decisions you're making and that's it. You no, 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 but would, would, is, that, is that a fair compromise? Would you be willing to sacrifice your free will? I wouldn't know whether I'd have it or not. So it doesn't you, really You put a deeper layer on it. I like that. I like <laughs> that. It's quite, you're going in deep, right? But regardless if you knew or not, now you have a concept of free will, right? Now, if I took away free will, yeah, is that worthy compromise so there's no like suffering and people don't make mistakes and people don't get hurt I mean, would you be willing to do that because the fact of the matter is um because <clears throat> there's so many layers to your question right and i realized that we're in time constraints so i'm trying to give you like really quick concise answers yeah. right but when god created this is the one of the beliefs of muslims when god created human beings the soul God asked the soul, that, look, do you want to go to earth? And there's going to be tests and so on and so forth. And um, we volunteered. And we agreed that, look, we're going to go through the tests where we're going to obey God. Yeah? Um, and that's with the knowledge that the soul, once you obey God, you're going to get... What? Sorry, I'm just asking. So, the God asked the soul... Yeah. He created a soul and he asked the soul. So he all created. of souls, all, all of the creation. Right, so he asked what he created yeah. whether it wanted to have free will or not. No, not have free will. To um, to go to the world, to, to go through the test. Would they obey and God basically? Would they worship God? So <coughs> the test, the, the question was if they're going to worship God alone. But and then if they worship God alone, that's the test that they will pass to enter paradise. But isn't that like programming an AI to give you certain responses? If I've created something, it will not on its own respond to me. Because I've just created this thing with a specific... However I've made it perfectly, right? Because I've made it, it doesn't really have its own thoughts if that makes sense you're, you're, you're thinking of like man-made kind of items and devices the soul the human being um, Allah created souls and human beings with free will yeah? they can choose to do good or bad yeah? um, God created angels without free will that is true yeah so angels cannot choose to be good or choose to be bad yeah? Uh, without complicating it too much, there's a third creation as well, which is jinns. Um, but yeah, we'll leave that to one side for the time okay. right? That's okay. Um, so that's why the human beings have that ability to kind of choose. So what ended up happening was um, the ones to reply first was the prophets of God. Yeah. Then you had the prophets, the messengers, the pious, the righteous. You know what I mean? And then right at the end, you had all the last people, like the hitlers, 
okay. and the Stalin, <laughs> right? Okay. So they still agreed to it, but it was more like they're just copying everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we we had the opportunity to actually make a conscious decision. So by the end of it, you could argue if we was asked the question, why can't we remember being asked the question? Right. Yeah. And <clears throat> the reason we can't remember is because um, that's part of it that we wouldn't be able to remember. But yeah. I don't know, because that, that just seems like, I mean, maybe again, it's because I am thinking no, no, go for it, from go for it. human terms, but again, being asked the question by something that's created you and you being able to say it how you would want to say it, I feel like it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Because when you, explain, uh, elaborate. When you, when you make something, like if God's created you, how will he create you without you already having a certain kind of ideas or mindset for you to be able to decide things on your own? Again, you're going back into being programmed. Yeah, so because... You're thinking God created us and we're, we're with a program. And it's, it's a fascinating point you make because what makes us not a program is the soul. So, you know, people... Sorry, Felicia, let me elaborate on that. Um, you know, people who don't believe in the soul. Then, without the soul, you're just a product of... Um, nature and nurture it's just a product of things you have no control over yeah so it's like um you're just you didn't choose your parents but your parents have influenced you you didn't choose your teachers but the teachers have influenced you you didn't choose your peers what area you grew up in the social economical kind of finance you had so all of these impact who you are and you've kind of parroted what your parents have said so you've never had a uh, what's it called a, a independent thought of your own but yeah? everything that you do and the way that you are is mainly based on what's around you that, that that's my point yeah so, so then you're, you're a product of what's around you and then the other element of it is kind of <coughs> genetics again which you don't have control over your disposition yeah. um, someone who's into psychology yeah. <laughs> you might find this yeah. fascinating so then the way, but then the soul element is something that you need to use. Yeah. So then, God didn't program. God, God's given you the opportunity to make decisions between wrong or right. If you choose to worship God, if you choose to follow the scripture. But then, if it, if it, so, He hasn't programmed how we are. The soul is just kind of blank, and then you just choose what you do, what you think is right, and what you think is wrong. But if your parents have raised you in a way that have made you think that like, something like abusing people is right and you know not saying thank you to people is wrong I mean saying thank you to people is wrong then you're going to have that idea for the rest of your life and that's going to become you if you come from I a, like you you're a very deep person right? <laughs> if you're from a non-religious background you're most likely not going to end up religious you still could I have a friend that got a boyfriend who was religious and she ended up really liking the religion and becoming religious even though her parents were um, and she now is religious but when you at the end of the day like your the way your parents are will influence you regardless this brings me into the point of the fitra right Islam teaches about this fitra um, as you continue your study you know it's about they call it the conscience mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, we call it fitra. Um, it's a natural inclination to good. Yeah. So innately, we know that murdering a baby is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something you need to be taught. Um, innately, we know that um, worshiping God, there's one God. When you ask a child, where is God? The child's going to point out how many gods are there. The child's not going to say there's multiple gods. Right. But then the society kind of changes us into kind of this new morals where kind of this subjective morality. Yeah. So that, does that answer your question? So when we, when you could argue that, okay, you're so influenced by your religion and stuff. And then I think, okay, you could Alhamdulillah, my bro. Zakhla khair. May Allah bless you, bro. 
Um, <coughs> when we believe that you're influenced by kind of the society, you are influenced by the society, but your fitra is there that can get corrupted by the society. But then God sends signs and messages and kind of uh, things to actually kind of connect with us. So there are people who were born in non-Muslim families. And like you said, um, they could have the experience of connect with someone and then change their faith. Right? There are people who are born in non-Muslim families, but then that kind of natural inclination to believe in God or worship God alone kind of reinforces really them. Um, like appears due to their kind of following the signs of the behaving in the right way because someone could be conditioned into misbehaving yeah, yeah? Um, but then that's down to them to make that choice to actually wait there's something in, within me saying this is wrong yeah um, like this kind of hedonistic behavior or this kind of sinful behavior but then they have to make a choice so if you have a natural inclination to be good yeah. And an innate idea to believe in God. One God, yeah. Do you really have the choice to believe in Him if He's already made you have that innate idea of Him? Because that, that's natural. But it can't be natural. Because it, it's, not, it's not natural, it's Anything not in the sense that it's programmed, it's something that's innate, it's natural. But God had to create that innate thing. God created that innate thing is because of the fact that it's it's not like a programming where it's like okay you're programmed with that innate feeling no. it's innate because it's it's it's, it's natural because it's natural it's it's how can i say it it's like that doesn't make sense God. it's not a program you're yeah. not programmed to think okay believe in god that's cool yeah. but if you are innately trying if you innately think of the idea of god nothing could have there's nothing as perfect as God. Okay. So only God could have put the idea of himself as so perfect into a person's mind. A person, because we are imperfect, can't conceive of something so perfect in their own. So okay. if you innately think of God, the idea of God had to have already been put by God in you. So does that actually give you the free will to believe or not believe if you innately are like what is there? <clears throat> it's like when we see, like this is one of the arguments in the Quran. Um, when you see the creation of God of Allah, right, it naturally makes you think that there's a creator. Yeah, you nobody's gonna see. Um, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'll be very quick. I'll be very quick. Um, you're not going to find a bowl in the desert, right? And say, oh, it just came by itself. Yeah. Oh, the sun melted it and the wind blew it and then suddenly it became a bowl. Right? Regardless if there's any logos or anything like that. So something as simple as a bowl. If you saw footsteps in the sand, you're not going to be, oh my gosh, what a coincidence. The wind just blew it. Yeah. So similarly, when you see the creation is just natural to you actually in be inclined towards thinking there's a creator and i'm saying that's how innate it is like even before man-made elements have gone into it or societies like when you go to and you can do your own independent research on this societies who haven't been influenced by other communities or people they're still um, worshiping they're believing in one god before they even like learn the concept of language or wearing clothes and so on and so forth, like really cultures which are um, away from um, other societies. So I'm like, okay, that's just to back up the whole innate nature. Am I making sense? It does make sense, but I don't know. To me, I feel like maybe we just aren't okay with not having a meaning in life. So we've had to make something to give ourselves meaning in life mm. and I feel like people people always want to give reason to something yeah. humans like are uh, innately gonna always want to give reason or ask questions to find a meaning to a specific thing that's just how we are we're just curious beings but based, based on what because I, I agree like you know people have made the argument that 
got us in the universe, we just believe in God because it makes people good. But why? Why, why, why would you say that? What makes you think that? Because the way I look at it is, we have you... tangible, sorry, just, okay. just to back it up with like the Islamic narrative, right? We have tangible evidence for what we believe. <laughs> like the Quran is the perfect unchanged word of God. Yeah? For someone to make the bold statement, it's perfect, it's unchanged. Yeah? Like the Quran talks, um, has prophecies which came true. Um, it talks about science and gets it right. It talks about history and talks about the past, gets it right. So it's not just like, oh, um, I'm just adding meaning or adding something, filling the gaps, so to speak. There's, there's actually good reasoning to actually why Muslims believe what we believe, the foundational beliefs and where it's coming from. So it feels like this book that's being changed and corrupted. It's like, oh, then I'm not going to take from it. Does it make sense? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to be honest with you, and with all humility, like when I'm talking about the soul and the fitrah, um, even Allah in the Quran says, the soul is a mystery. Does it make sense? No one knows about the soul. So I probably didn't do a very good job of explaining it, but that, that's one of the things that my knowledge, my explanation is coming from um, what we know about. Does it make sense? So I know there's such a thing as a soul. There's elements of it I know, but something that's eternal that doesn't die. Does it make sense? So the body will die, the soul will go to paradise. Like these are abstract things. So I can't really tell you the how, but I can tell you the what I know of it. Does it make sense? So in regards to the fitra as well. Um, similarly, so when I'm making these claims about what I believe and why I believe. There's a strong foundation for it as well. I'm, I'm, I'm making sense. No, it does make sense. How do you feel about that? <laughs> no, I respect everyone's opinions and everyone's religion. Ooh. I just have arguments in my head for and arguments against. And I'm just, I've always been a really curious child yeah, all my good. life. And I love asking questions. And no one can tell you I'm really annoying. I can see everything on preguntas. Like my parents were scared to tell me things because I always ask why, like why this, why that, how did this happen? Like no matter what, I always have a question to ask, and I think that for me is a problem when trying to find something to believe in because I'm always going to have questions that, to be fair, I'm probably going to never be able to be answered. I think in Islam, all of your questions will be answered. Yeah, if you'll be satisfied is different. Yeah. Um, but Islam as a, as a religion, Quran as a book from God, right? we welcome questions. In fact, it says Talabbuk, which I can't pronounce now, my mind's oh. freezing, it's okay. going a bit icy, really right? Yeah. Um, where it's telling you to think, to reflect, to question. Does make sense? And in Islam, we, we welcome questions. Does make sense? So, like I said, I don't think you're not going to offend anyone in Islam with theology to be like, oh no, she asked him like, Okay, now that's a good question. Um, this is what the Quran says. This is what the Hadith says. This is what the Prophet says to him, but that which is the Hadith. Um, have you ever read the Quran? I can I've tell. Had to <laughs> oh, wow. I've had to learn. I don't mean it in a bad way. Quotes from it for my GCSEs. Yeah. Which I can't remember. I can't even remember. Listen, I've somewhat read the Bible. I haven't. I've been in Christianity since I was a child. I kind of stopped when I was around 12, 13, and I still haven't read all of it, and I still can't tell you everything that's in it. I only know from what I can remember briefly and from what my parents say. So I haven't really ever sat down and read any kind of religious book that seriously. So um, I haven't. But I have heard things from it, from my friends, or maybe at school. Um, I also do philosophy yeah. as an A level, so sometimes then kind of things come up. Um, but I actually read it like what my mom has done in Spanish. Um, the reason I ask, and the reason I can tell is, um, all your questions are good, valid. Um, and when you look into Islam, when you read the scripture, I think you'll, you'll be satisfied intellectually. Um, so then a lot of the stuff you're saying, it's like, again, it's like when I speak to people, 
due to the time limitations and it's like is there so much vast information to be given and I'm, 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 I'm kind of cherry picking the information um, and I think when you look into it with an open mind I think my dad's calling me to see your mind reading ability <laughs> Yeah, it's my dad. Yeah. Can I can I give you a Quran to read? Yeah, sure. To get from the Quran. I think it's just what I want to get from any single other religion. It's Which just, is? Like, tell me your story. Tell me what you believe in. I want to find out why you believe in what's made you believe in what you believe in. Believe in. Oh. Do I see myself believing this too? Mm. Can I believe this? Do I have little questions? Habibi, can I get one with the leaflets? Yeah, you guys are in a rush. I'm going to let you go, but I want to give this one to yourself because I think... Okay. I don't no, there's no leaflets in there. English. Yeah, this is English translation. Okay, cool. It's yeah? fine. Brilliant. Spanish. Uh, next time, next time, next time. Okay, Thank cool. you so much for your Thank time. You so much. And yeah, I sincerely look forward to speaking to you okay. next one of the Saturdays. It's one of the Saturdays. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. So much. You take care. See you, okay. madam. You take care.